Hey, YouTube, Reddit, anybody else, random followers on, uh, <clears throat> on my page. Anyway, uh, I wanted to make an educational video about uh, GH, which is general hardness, and KH, uh, which is the alkalinity in your water. Um, I felt those things to be kind of benign in the beginning of doing a lot of my aquascapes. And that's because plants so much don't really care about those elements as much as other organisms, living ones, particularly like fish and uh, shrimp, shellfish, crustaceans, and all those things. Um, so I was having a problem. Um, uh, about a month or two ago, I posted a video. I had bought some ghost shrimp, which are really cheap. And I put them in my tank, and uh, a week later, I saw my fish tearing them apart. Well, I thought that they were eating them. And then I started to notice that I had put three or four shrimp in there. I started to notice all their molting shells everywhere, but their bodies were being eaten. So I started to dig to figure out what was what was going on with this because it didn't seem right. So what I found out was is that if your GH, which stands for general hardness, um, isn't high enough, what happens is, is shrimp and other shellfish and like snails, uh, even in fresh water, if the GH isn't high enough, what happens when they try to molt or grow, those exoskeletons don't have enough uh, minerals in order to harden whenever they're aging and getting older or molting in like shrimp's uh, cases. And so I was like, okay, so maybe this was the issue. So I started testing my tap water. And I found out in my tap water, everyone's tap water is different. In my tap water, it is almost completely pure. My GH, my general hardness, was virtually zero, which is not good. I mean, even plants want some. Uh, and my alkalinity was through the roof. And because my alkalinity was through the roof, my pH was extremely high. And fish, the majority of tropical freshwater fish, do not want it higher than eight. Mo usually plants as well, but some will... You know, if it's if you keep it stable, they'll figure it out. But uh, anyway, so I, I started researching and started looking, what is GH? I YouTube so many videos and people are talking about GH and ways you can raise it. You know, there's a lot of products that you can dump in there that will raise your GH and all this. But I wanted to know exactly what this GH is. What makes it? What comprises general hardness? And um, why is it so important? Well, what makes... General hardness are two elements, uh, magnesium and, um, hold on, I'm going to pull this bag out, magnesium and calcium. So, as I was making this uh, new tank, what I started to do is I had uh, tested my tap water, saw that there were none of those minerals in there. Uh, our water goes to an RO system, so there's like nothing in it. Um, so I have to re-add all the minerals, you know, that I need, but today we're just going to focus on general hardness and I'm going to show you my tank here in a minute. So after I tested the water, saw there was none in there, I tested my tank water and it looked virtually the same, um, you know, uh, ex excluding other elements that I had added that are specifically for the fish. So I wanted to test. I realized a while ago I had bought something called, and I may pronounce this wrong, called a Siri stone or a Siri stone. It's very popular in aquascaping when it comes to shrimp. And the reason for this is that it releases calcium, which is important for shrimp who need hard water. So a lot of hobbyists who aquascape and do regular fish um, who don't need hard water, they stay away from those rocks because they jack the general hardness up. Well, because I had none, I was like, I'm going to give this a shot. So I I put the stone, and first to test it, because there are some um, bogus series stones you can find online, because I did order mine, you want to pour a little bit of vinegar on there. If it starts to um, uh, fizz slightly with the vinegar, um, then you know your uh, rock is releasing calcium. Other stones, like limestone, will do it also. Um, but there's a lot of ways to do it, and I want to explain to you what I did. So first I put in the uh, series stone. And if you look back here, underneath that driftwood is that stone. Well, I started monitoring my GH, and I noticed that it started going up. Um, not as much as I wanted, but I realized it was going up. It's a five-pound rock in a 40-gallon tank. Uh, and I was like, okay, well, this isn't solving my issue. And yet, I didn't have any fish or anything in here, right? I'm just trying to understand what general hardness is and what you're supposed to do to keep it 
stable because I don't want to rely on products that I got to drip in there, you know, once a week. I want stability, something that's going to naturally release the things that I wanted. So then I bought the uh, essentially ocean sand, which has uh, it's really high in uh, calcium. I, I mean, really high. So you don't need very much because this is meant for saltwater, you know, aquarium. So it's just you. I can't tell you how much you need, so what I started to do, since I already had a beach area, I knew it was okay. That was just regular white sand. It had no, you know, uh, value when it came to calcium or any other elements. It was just blank. It might not even be real sand. I have no idea. But this is loaded with calcium. So then I started putting about a tablespoon of it on top of the white sand that I already had every day and just was slowly watching my GH rise and rise and rise. And then when I got right to where it was soft, uh, I was like, okay, well, general hardness isn't just made up of calcium. Yes, I can jack it all the way up with a bunch of calcium, but I need these other element, the other element that's important, which is magnesium. So I was like, okay, so where am I going to get magnesium? Where am I going to get stability in magnesium uh, where I don't have to constantly keep buying GH up products or uh, stability products by C Seachum, and when you buy those products, you constantly have to check all the time because they evaporate and they disappear, and then you do a water change and you remove a lot of that stuff. So I want stuff in there that when I do a water change, they stay. All right. So uh, also, let's keep in mind my pH was really high, but it was dropping with the calcium. Uh, but we'll talk about the other ways that I I lowered it through natural elements here in a, in a minute. So to get the magnesium. I bought regular Epsom salt. Everyone knows what this is. People put it in their feet bath, you know, make their feet smell good, makes your skin soft, makes everything feel awesome and amazing. Well, as I was digging and researching, I realized that Epsom salt is nearly 100% magnesium. And I was like, amazing. And it's uh, safe for fish. You, you don't over you don't over want to do it you know so like I said I can't tell anyone how much they should have for any tank so what I started to do is every day I would add a tablespoon of that in there I got my calcium right and then I noticed I was just missing a smidgen to make it hard enough for the things that I, for the things that I had essentially killed you know I wanted to make up for this so I started adding a tablespoon slightly every day directly into my filter uh, the the hang on the back filter and it would slowly as it dissolves uh, release into there and every day I added a tablespoon until I got my hardness just where I was at okay now plants benefit from it too they love they like magnesium and they like calcium also but I was trying to figure out why my freshwater shrimp were dying why my snails I had mystery snails that were dying and getting holes in their shells and I need to understand this so once I had done that I'm like, well, now I got my general hardness high. Um, what kind of fish can survive in this? And I found out that there are a few. Uh, so there are live bear fish like guppies, inlers, platies that like hard water, and they even won't breed without it. So I made a change here, and I did add some fish. Um, I'll just kind of do a pan around, see if you can see them. See these fish? That's a female tuxedo guppy. This is a cobra guppy over here. I've got, I've got an in, that's an inler guppy. Each one of them have a, a female. There's only four fish in here uh, right now, uh, but you know I got the um, the GH where it needs to be. Uh, you know for those fish. That's why I decided to go with those. And you know I guess I can put some shrimp in there. And you'll notice that there is a lot of plants in there. And on my next video, I'm going to describe exactly what to do, what kind of products to use to take care of um, your water in general outside of focusing on general hardness and uh, alkalinity. Um, and uh, we will discuss how I brought my pH down with natural elements on the next one. And we'll go through everything but that'll be a separate and i've used a lot of products trust me i've killed a lot of fish you know and i feel bad every time because i'm i've been held responsible i bought them and i told them i would hey this will be a stable place and i kill a fish i figure out what i did wrong i killed some shrimp i thought my fish had murdered it no they were eating the dead remains because when it molted its shell 
It didn't have enough calcium and magnesium in the water for its new shell to harden, and it's called a failed molt. They die almost instantly. So now I've got an environment that is great. That I, it improved the plant, the water for the plant quality, but you know I raised it a little too high for some of the average tropical fish. So because of that, I had to decide what kind of fish I was going to have. And um, since I'm going to have the water um, this mineral rich, to like it is, um, I can keep a bunch of shrimp in there as well. And you know maybe a uh, Maybe these female guppies will get it on with the other and they'll have babies and then there's plenty of places for them to hide in there. But on my next video, we'll talk more about uh, fertilizers, liquid fertilizers, soil substrate, all of that for your plants. But that'll wrap it up on on, on GH and KH and, and, and what that means and what it does. Um, and always check your tap water. It all starts with your tap water. If, if you got no minerals in your tap water, then you got to put that stuff back in there. So these are things to consider, especially anyone who wants to keep um, any kind of shellfish, whether it's freshwater or saltwater, um, you're going to have to figure out the balance. And I use all kinds of stuff, just so you know. I use tep strip bonanzas. Um, I've got, you know, those generic ones. Um, I mean, there's even API Master test kits that are supposed to be perfect. And let me tell you, none of them are perfect. So what, what, they, what they do whenever you test, they give you a general idea of where you're going wrong. None of them are going to precisely to the percent tell you exactly what's happening in here. But when I'm testing it and I'm seeing all, the, all of these irregularities, it may not be perfect, but um, I know that there's a problem heading in that direction and that's where I should work on. So you always want to give or take parts per million, however it's measured. I think these tetra test strips do, they do parts per million when it comes to GH. Um, same with the alkalinity. They, they all test differently, but they give you like a value of what's normal for your average fish. But it doesn't tell you what's normal for fish that need harder water or softer water. You know, so, and I definitely didn't hurt the plants by adding these, uh, uh, this magnesium and adding the calcium. Those are things that they like too. So that's why we'll talk about um, uh, fer fertilization, fertilizer, and things of those nature on my next uh, video. So I hope you found this helpful because I was so confused about this GHKH thing and the alkalinity and acidic water and um, general hardness. It, 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 it all made no sense to me. And I, I needed to find out what makes that stuff. So I started digging. And now I have a stable environment in almost every way uh, that I can imagine. Um, so anyway, if you have any uh, questions and you want to know more, you know, I'll answer to the best of my ability. If you already got a tank in some of these creatures and you're trying to have an idea of how much to add, you know, just start small and slowly monitor until you've reached that point. And then, you know, here I am. I don't have to do anything else, you know. These rocks aren't going to go anywhere. This series stone is for indefinitely will always release small amounts of calcium. You know, the uh, beach coral sand indefinitely almost will just continue to release calcium. The only thing I've got to do is I figured out how much magnesium and this stuff's so cheap, man. It's like it's like a dollar for a, a five pound bag of this. And I only need to put a spoon in. Uh, a tablespoon of it uh, once every couple of weeks, which I don't find that big of a deal as opposed to buying a bunch of GH up products and Seachum stability products that you got to put in every couple of days because they dissolve or when you do a water change, you're removing all of it and you got to add. It's just, these are just products by big companies that they want to sell you to keep, to get you to keep buying that stuff. And I wanted to solve the issue as naturally as possible because I don't want to have to do that much cleaning, you know? Um, I want things to stay stabilized through nature and their own elements. So, um, again, if, uh, thank you for watching. But if you have any questions, uh, my name's Dustin. Uh, just ask in the comments below. I will answer. I, I know I've had people before tell me you didn't exactly explain everything. And I just kind of talk at the spurt of the moment because over the past two weeks, this has been perplexing my mind and like blowing it with all the adjustments I've been making before I even put fish in there. And then I realized, well, I made it fa uh, safe for a particular type of fish uh, or shrimp, but now I need to go with the type of fish that like to live in that environment too. So 
Uh, anyway, thanks again, and um, I'll uh, catch you next time.